Hello everyone and welcome to part 6 of my video series of our 2017 Crossing Newfoundland by ATV trip. This particular day we went from Corner Brook all the way to Robinson's. It's about 145 kilometers which is about 90 miles and I'm going to show you here quickly how we did that. It's mostly on the west coast, right? really all on the west coast. And uh, here's Corner Brook. This is where we spent the night, just outside of Corner Brook actually, called Steady Brook, uh, in a hotel over here, uh, Marblewood Village. I mentioned in the previous video, if you had seen that, there's a gap in the trail between Pasadena here and Corner Brook. Um, it's a little difficult to get around depending on which route you're taking. And the way we did it this year, we had to go from here and somehow to get over to this trail. Uh, and there's no trail in between. So what we did is we drove the highway, and I hate to do that. Uh, we had to drive the shoulder of the road from here along the provincial highway here. It was about four or five kilometers until we got into Corner Brook right across from the Rivers End Motel where we stayed last year. Now this line in orange that you see is the trail to call uh, to get through Corner Brook, I call it on my website. It's a 14 kilometer trail and it allows you to navigate around or through Corner Brook, if you will, so you don't have to drive the whole way on the roads or anything like because you don't really want to do that anyways. So we went through here and some people call this um, it's sometimes affectionately known as the goat trail uh, because it's a little rough, especially if you're used to driving rail bed all week and nice mountain roads. Uh, this is a little more challenging. If you're a beginner, you probably do not want to go uh, on this trail. But what you want to do rather instead is if you stay at this motel or this motel the night you're in Cornerbrook, uh, call Cecil Anderson or a tow truck company to come pick you up and then drive you over to this pickup point over here. Uh, to get on the uh, to get on the trail bed and some people what they'll do is come over here to logger school road instead and pick up the trail there this is kind of a mountain road it's good driving and you can get in there so i'll show you in the video some of the obstacles that we had through here it's not really that bad even if you're an intermediate driver some people it's beyond their comfort level but it's just really a little bit of mud and uh, some tight trails but it's not really too too bad so when you follow that and you come out uh, it brings you out to massey drive you just follow it through here this is a paved road uh, it's not too far, it, and you're staying off the main highway, and you have to drive from over here to here. You're driving about 300 meters or so on the shoulder of the road again, and then you can jump on this trail here, which will take you over to the trailway. This particular trail is 12.5 kilometers, and it's pretty good going except for the last, I don't know, I'm going to say from about this point to this point. I think it's the last two or three kilometers. It's a little rough. It's just slow going, some water and some mud, but, I mean, it's nothing you can't get through. And then we followed this uh, trail all the way here down to Robinson's. And we stopped in here at the pub in Glance. There's a little intersection here where you cross a paved road. Just turn right up the paved road, and the distance isn't far. It's uh, yeah, 200 meters, so not far at all. Then we, uh, we kept going west. We stopped over here in Stephenville Crossing. There's a gas station that's just it's right across the street from the trail. You can see if you zoom in really close here, here's the trail, and you get a drive just across the road and the gas stations right there okay then we left there and headed on down to Robinson's and just down this trail here and when you get to Robinson's we stayed at Pirates Haven which is right here right off the trail so you'll see a great big sign for it here turn right go up the hill follow it it's pretty easy to find um, across the street and down a bit um, there's a gas station you can go to and this orange trail is what we do the next morning before we leave it's really beautiful up here the view of the bluffs and so forth this year because we had so many guys not all of us could stay at uh robinson's or sorry at pirate's haven in robinson so half of us stayed here and then half of us stayed here over on the cliffside cabins and it was too bad it was raining that day because the sun sets on this side over here on the ocean and those guys that were over here would have got a great view of that but unfortunately it was all cloudy so okay this is first thing in the morning we just left marblewood village we're heading to where uh, the bypass trail starts and to do that you have to drive a few kilometers on the shoulder of the road and uh, this is the uh, bypass trail right here it's about 14 kilometers long in total and it, it allows you to drive through corner Brook so that you don't have to drive a long distance on the paved roads or have to be uh, or to have to hire a trucking service to do so so now it's when it's starting to get a little bit rougher and then uh, it gets a little muddy in a few places but it's not really that bad and then uh, you'll see uh, just here coming up
Okay, in this particular section right here, uh, it looked like most of the tracks were going to the right through this trail, but uh, I was having a hard time getting through with my side by side. It was just too wide. Uh, the front bumper kept catching on some of the trees here, and uh, rather than try to force my way through, I went to the left. I backed up and went around, and it was actually uh, wasn't too bad to get around at all. From sitting in my machine, I wasn't quite sure enough if the ground was solid enough there to get through, so I went out and took a look, and uh, I was pretty confident it was solid enough to get through, so I decided to go give it a try. It will throw into the roof. Because I was going so slow in some of these sections here and all the heat coming up off the engine, I think it was causing my GoPro to steam up a little bit a few times through here. In case anyone's wondering, I'm running stock Maxxis 2.0 27-inch uh, radials uh, on my Commander here, and uh, they're worn a bit, but they're still actually getting great grip on the hard terrain and uh, a bit of a light mud. This was another section where the main trail looked like it should go to the left, which is what I did, and I made it through here with a little bit of spinning, but uh, I think Dwayne got hung up behind me got a little stuck but it wasn't his fault he had a branch come up and wedge in between his suspension everybody else went to the right after that and made it through no problem There's a log, yeah, mine made the same sound. Go, go to the left a bit that way, just try to go more, and then give her, you should get right over it. Stay to the left. When you come through again, go into the trees a bit, stay to the left around it. Yeah, okay. You let off the gas, you lost your momentum. Get Yeah, it's worth a try. Uh, how how we drove right over that to the right, went right over it. Dwayne ended up getting this huge branch stick there stuck up that was like a perfect Y shape wrapped around his suspension that was a real pain to uh, it hung him up pretty good yeah. 
it's still, it's like a V. You gotta back up, I think. That's stuck in there, good. Snap it. Want me to tow you? What? Want me to tow you? I don't know. If it's, I don't want to. I, I don't want to damage anything because that's 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 wedge right in like that. You know what we need, Bob? Saw. He's coming through next. He's trying it. He's trying it this way. No, no. There's a bad stick stuck in there. He'll never make it if he doesn't floor it. I know. You gotta give it a bit of speed. Ah, uh, back up some more. Back up, back up. Yes, it is. Bob saw. Let's do it all again until you film it. I am filming it. <laughs> Did you get the saw, the wood, the wood out? There you go. Yeah, get back right out too. Woo! Made her. Yeah. That was that was a big ass. Was it ever? That was bad. I never seen anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay everybody just to let you know that was the baby stuff no i hope so i don't know how much done. yeah okay enough horsing around on to the next mud hole Okay, we are finished with that bypass trail finally and we're back on the regular rail bed and it's time to make up some time here.
Hey, Bruce and I were kind of really moving ahead of the other group here for a little bit. We didn't mind the water holes. We weren't slowing down for them at all. In fact, we found that the faster you went through these water holes, the kind of smoother you went through them. You just kind of glided over the water in them. I think this was the only day that I wish I had to have my full windshield installed on the machine to keep some of the rain out because I got soaked. Um, but there's no place to store a full windshield when you're traveling like this to take it on and off, unfortunately. Oh, Beaver Dam. So this is us at the pub in Glance, and by the time we got there, I was soaked. A couple of us were. Some of them had some really good waterproof clothing on, but I didn't. Mine was just garbage, so luckily Paul had brought out a second suit with him, and he let me change into it before we left and hit the trail again. This sand hill that you see here is much steeper looking in person than it is on the video. I wish I could have gotten a better perspective of it for you on the video. You need to use four-wheel drive when going up this hill because the sand is soft and Paul forgot to switch his machine into four-wheel drive here. I hope he's gonna... Oh, 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 Paul, Paul, Paul. Oh, don't back down that hill. Oh, my God. Now he's just digging himself deeper. Um, This is not a place that you want to get stuck and have to back down on, but Paul did it and he did both successfully. That didn't sound good. Turn around. Even though he was in two-wheel drive, he almost made it. It does. One place that we always like to stop is uh, a bridge, an old train trestle over the Fishels River. And this is it here. I'm going to zoom in and show you. If you click on it on my map, you can see uh, you can see the bridge and the gypsum wall in the background. It's a nice place to take some pictures. You can drive your ATV down underneath. Although I don't know if we're going to do that anymore. Uh, the trail that takes you down there is getting a little eroded and quite steep. Now, those of you who are wondering, um, in the very beginning of the videos this year, it says that we, there was two rollovers. The first rollover, we didn't get on video. Actually, the second one, we didn't either. The first one uh, was about 10 minutes on the trail after we got off the boat on the very first day. And uh, one of the guys hit a bump really hard, and a box of tools fell out of the back of his machine. And another guy that was driving close behind him uh, swerved to avoid it and rolled his machine on the side and luckily he wasn't hurt and his machine uh, had a few scra uh, few scratches rather on the handlebar and stuff so um, he was fine and then the, this day as we were coming up here like we do every year as we come up to this bridge there's a trail to the edge of it uh, right over here and it's pretty steep and it takes you down on the bottom and it, it makes for some nice pictures the problem is uh, right when you start on the trail here 
the dirt used to come up on the trail right up to those girders and it was kind of smooth going down but now a lot of it is eroded and you have quite a drop where the steel girders are and you drop down a bit so uh, one of the guys in the group was coming down here on that trail and he didn't realize there was such a drop off there and it kind of made his machine go to the right a bit and it and he got stuck up against a tree which was no big deal but the hill is so steep there he tried to back up off the tree and the back of his machine came up because he was nose down nose heavy uh, and the back of his machine came up and rolled over him uh, into the bushes and stuff and luckily he didn't get a scratch he wasn't hurt and uh, so we were all thankful about that and none of us got it on video or pictures because we didn't know what happened at first a few of us were down at the bottom and then uh, he came along afterwards and uh, we kind of heard the noise after and ran up the hill to make sure he was okay and he was and it took us a few minutes to get his machine out of there Okay, once we were back on the trail heading towards Robinson's and Pirate's Haven, uh, it didn't take us that long and uh, my, my GoPro died again unfortunately on me so this is the exact same stretch of trail but it just happens to be from uh, 2016's footage that's why you all of a sudden see the windshield in the front there. Every time we do this trip, we always go through Robinson's and we stop and spend the night at the Pirate's Haven campground. It's a really nice spot. It's really an ATV friendly location. It's right off the trail and it'd be good for snowmobilers in the winter as well. We stay here, we rent their cabins. They have three really nice cabins that have full kitchens, two bedrooms each. Uh, they have really nice decor. They have a nice uh, pub and a restaurant. The service is really good here, and you know I can't say enough about the owners, Paul and Ruth. They're really ambassadors for ATVing in Newfoundland. And if you're going to go through and do this trip, do yourself a favor and stop in at this place for the night when you go through Robinson's. You won't regret it. Yeah.